This video is a stepping stone to get to a process where I will make nitric acid without distillation. I show how to make calcium nitrate one of the necessary chemicals. Calcium nitrate may be difficult to obtain, so I show how I made it from a more readily available chemical, calcium ammonium nitrate. This is a common fertilizer that may be more easy to get for the home chemist. The idea is to convert the ammonium nitrate component of the fertilizer to calcium nitrate by reacting it with calcium hydroxide. Because this reaction will produce quite a bit of ammonia gas as a byproduct, some means of dealing with this toxic gas must be devised. If you do not have a fume hood, you can construct an ammonia trap similar to the one I use in this video. To perform this reaction, you will need calcium ammonium nitrate decahydrate, calcium hydroxide, and hydrochloric acid. Here I show the chemical equations I use to calculate the amounts of chemicals that are required. Without going into a detailed explanation, I start with the assumption that I have 5 grams of calcium hydroxide available. Using this value, I calculated that I will need about 146 grams of calcium ammonium nitrate. When I perform the actual reaction, I use double the amount of calcium hydroxide to help speed up the reaction and ensure that it goes to completion. The unused calcium hydroxide is filtered out of the final product. For the ammonia trap, I calculate 19.5 grams of 31.45% strength hydrochloric acid will be sufficient. This includes a 25% excess as a safety margin. Here I have measured out the required amounts of all the chemicals I will be using. 19.5 grams of HCl at 31.45% strength. 146 grams of calcium ammonium nitrate and 10 grams of calcium hydroxide. In addition to some water, I will be using a 500 milliliter beaker, a hot plate with a stir bar, and a 500 milliliter vacuum filter flask as a reaction vessel. The ammonia trap consists of a beaker with a solution of hydrochloric acid and an inverted funnel connected through a hose to the reaction flask. I add about 300 milliliters of water to a beaker containing a magnetic stir bar. Then I slowly will add the calcium ammonium nitrate and with lots of stirring and some heat, I will get everything to dissolve. Calcium ammonium nitrate has now dissolved, so I proceed to filter out impurities and get it cleared up using a grade 3 lab filter paper with a coffee filter on top of it. The filtering helped a lot, but it still looks a little cloudy. I'm going to try again with my old standby trick of placing a wad of cotton in the bottom of a funnel. It looks a little better, but still not perfect. It will have to do. So I pour the filtered solution into the reaction flask and proceed to set up everything for the main event. First I add some water to the ammonia trap, then I add the pre-measured hydrochloric acid. I will then add a little more water and bring the level up to just to cover the bottom of the funnel.
So after adding a stir bar, I then add the calcium, calcium hydroxide to the reaction vessel. I use a funnel to help get everything neatly into the flask. Then I stop it off with a number 8 rubber stopper, turn on the stirring, and set the heat to maximum, then wait for everything to heat up. This reaction proceeds slowly and requires a lot of heat and stirring to drive to completion. So while I was waiting for the reaction to get going, I realized that the ammonia trap would probably heat up eventually from the hot ammonia and steam and would be, and would be uh, too hot. So I grabbed a flat glass dish and placed it under the ammonia trap beaker, then readjusted the funnel height. Later, if needed, I would add cool water to the dish to keep the ammonia trap from becoming too hot. So now the reactants are boiling, and so far everything seems to be going according to plan. So after several minutes have passed, I begin to notice a little bit of ammonia odor above the ammonia trap beaker. I was suspicious, so I used a piece of pH paper to see if the HCl had been depleted. Sure enough, the test paper indicated the solution was basic. All the HCl was reacted away. My response was to add more HCl to the beaker until it became acidic again. I have no idea why more ammonia was apparently produced than I had calculated. The smoke is actually very fine particles of ammonium chloride forming in the air as the hydrochloric acid vapor from the acid reacts with ammonia gas present. So it's still basic. I need more acid yet. So no more messing around with the pipette. I just grabbed a jar of hydrochloric acid and dump some in. So that finally succeeded in restoring the ammonia trap to acidic conditions. The temperature is not too hot yet, but a few minutes later, I decide to cool things down. So here I am carefully removing the stopper after turning down the heat. I carefully sniff the vapor 
coming from the flask to see if there's still any ammonia present. It's not very strong, but it, I decided to let it run for a few more minutes just to be sure it's finished. I should mention that this reaction has taken well over an hour to get this far, just so you know what to expect if you do this yourself. After a few minutes I try again. This time I decide that it's good enough. So I test the uh, ammonia trap just out of curiosity and it's still acidic so I assume all the ammonia was neutralized. So here I pour all of the reactants into a beaker in preparation for the filtration step that will remove the unreacted calcium hydroxide. After having washed the vacuum flask with some dilute hydrochloric acid, I am set up to do some vacuum filtration using the coffee filter. coffee filter got most of it but I think I can do better so I repeat this time using a grade 3 lab filter paper I moisten the filter paper with some water to make sure that it sets flat on the bottom of the funnel. This time through it looks nice and clear. So I pour the calcium nitrate solution into a flat glass baking dish and then I place the dish into an electric skillet. The skillet has a layer of sand on the bottom. I replace the lid and turn it slightly askew to allow water vapor to escape more easily. Then I set the heat to maximum. After a couple of hours I check the drying process and it looks like it might be dry. After scraping it around for a while I decide it needs to cook a little longer. Now that it's finally dry, I work quickly to get an accurate weight measurement before it starts to absorb water from the air. This will happen very quickly with calcium nitrate. So I transfer all the contents into the beaker that I previously zeroed out the weight on, on the scale. The final amount recovered was 106 grams, which was a little less than I had hoped. The theoretical amount was calculated to be about 122 grams, 
So this was a yield of about 87%. Be sure to watch my next video where I will use this calcium nitrate to make nitric acid without any distillation.